In this tip and trick, I want to talk a little bit about the animation offset controllers that were introduced as part of the Extension 1 release for 3DS Max 2016. And before I even get started, I'd like to thank Martin Coven for running me through some of the basics of this tool. Uh, there's a lot to it and, um, you know, a lot of uh, fanfare around the new Text Plus tool that was introduced with the Extension 1 release. But as part of the text tool, there's also, um, you know, it's not getting as much uh, write-up are these animation offset controllers. So I've been playing around a little bit with these and I just wanted to show you a little bit of what can be done. And this is just a really simple example. Um, I've got our friend the teapot here and I'm gonna use a free script out here called Fracture Voronoi to break this thing up. Uh, this is uh, available for free at ScriptSpot. And then I'm gonna break this up into a few more pieces here so that we've got our teapot uh, kind of well, broken up or fractured. Then what I'm going to do is just select all of these pieces in it and do a really simple animation of this thing kind of uh, just flying away. First, I'm going to go to frame 20 and I'm going to, with auto key on, I'm going to scale every piece down really, really small and I'm just moving the mouse, you know, down, 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 down. So every piece basically goes to infinitely nothing. Then what I'm going to do is actually just move them up and out of the way and I'm going to rotate these pieces. It's hard to see and they're actually zeroed out, you know, zero size, but I'm just rotating them a little bit. So now we get all these pieces is kind of falling into uh, one one place there. Then what I'm going to do is reverse the animation real quick. So I'm going to say, um, you know, all the first frames are last and the last are first. Let's keep this to a nice uh, zero to 20. So now what we've got is off screen. We've got this all these pieces and they fall into place nice and even. So typically to do this kind of stuff, you might think of using a particle system of some, or something like that. But now instead, what we can do is this animation offset. So with everything selected here, what I'm going to do is come up under animation offset controls and add an offset controller to this. Now what happens is we have a lot of different um, things that we can offset here and you got to be a little bit um, aware of what you're doing. So what we've got is um, transforms. So what we're doing is we're looking at animated transforms. So in this case I've got all this scale and position and rotation information and I'm going to just select and just to remind you everything is selected that we're dealing with all the pieces of the teapot and I'm going to select all those channels and now we have an offset controller on every single one of these. So if I look at the modify uh, panel or the command panel, you can see that we've got, in fact, this new modifier called timing and offset. And here's some great new tools for doing just that. Uh, let me go full screen here so you can kind of see what's going on. So you can see that all these pieces are kind of falling into place. Um, what's great about this is as this is playing back, and before I move on, maybe let's just increase this to, say, 300 frames so we've got a larger scene to work with here. So we got all our, of our pieces landing into place. And you can do things like um, change the order of these. So I can kind of go into a random order uh, and kind of mess around with this. Um, there's a lot you can do in here for time's sake. I'm just going to show you a couple of these. The animation ease graph is something that's kind of cool where you can do an overall um, ease curve of the original animation. So now these things are going to sort of like come quickly out of the sky and ease to a stop, if you will. And all this can be edited live and on the fly. Um, I'm also going to make this happen a little bit faster. So in the original animation was 20 keyframes. Let's just half that amount. So now that these uh, pieces are going to fall uh, much more quickly into place. And this last little uh, sort of tip and trick here I'm going to do is maybe let's say this orange piece right here, I wanted to sort of be the starting point of everything. That guy right there. What we can do is say the offset controller. I want to be playback in the original um, original. Um, frame range, but then I'm going to pick this object right here to identify what is the, the starting point of that. And then optionally, I could just say I want to normalize that order. So now you can see as I play this back without doing any scripting or particle animation or anything like that, we've got this nice, simple animation or actually it's kind of a complex animation, but it didn't take us any time at all of this building of, of, of our teapot. Now, lastly, what we could do is if we wanted to go out to, if this was an object with like thousands of pieces or something like that, we could also um, optionally, I'm just, and this has nothing to do with offset controllers, what I'm about to do is just say, let's select everything in here and I'm going to export this um, using the Alembic file format. And the Alembic file format was new to um, the previous release of Max in the extension. And we continue to develop uh, tools around the Alembic. One last one, and I'm just going to overwrite this file using defaults here. The last thing I wanted to show you about the Alembic is I'm going to delete this teapot and now import the actual Alembic file. So we completely blasted all that other work we had. And the Alembic file is a, uh, you know, a um, sort of a cached, a geometry cache version that's on disk. What we can do is look at the root of our Alembic file 
right here. And this is a cool option we added uh, in the newer release of 3ds Max uh, 2015 in the extensions is go into performance mode. And what that did was really quickly cached all this Alembic data onto the video card. So now in this case, it's just a teapot with something like 50 pieces. But if you were going to have, you know, do this uh, lots of destruction or something like that on a on a bigger object with a lot of different parts, this would alleviate the uh, CPU from having to think about that, all that calculations. It's essentially baking it in. This Alembic data could also be passed into another application that uh, does read the Alembic file format. So that's just a quick look at the new animation offset controllers and one, just one way of many, there's hundreds of cool things I've seen with this thing and hopefully we'll be posting more videos uh, about animation offset controllers and text plus in the coming weeks. Thanks.